Hi, this is Juan Duque for AETootsPlus.com. This tutorial will show you how to fake the look of a homemade stop motion animation using 3D Max and After Effects. Um, basically, it's to turn a regular looking animation like this into a more choppy, kind of jumpy, homemade looky stop motion animation, which is actually not stop motion. Um, in the description you can find links to real-world examples for some commercials we did for a uh, supermarket chain called El Rey in uh, Panama but let me show you a couple of them uh, this is one um, basically it's like a kinda like an American Idol audition thing for bread and fruits and vegetables and stuff and the client wanted that uh, look of stop-motion but he especially one he was looking for that uh homemade look uh that uh, you know uh characterizes uh the stop motion of uh you know past years when they didn't have the technology to make it look as smooth as some of the art man anim animations look now like um chicken run and stuff like that so basically uh we needed to make it look homemade and what gives away a homemade stop-motion animation is um, a, a couple of things. Uh, first, there's uh, poor planning. Uh, so when you don't plan ahead while doing stop-motion, um, the curves are going to be linear. You're not going to have ease in or ease out. Everything is very linear. Um, also, since it's uh, sometimes hastily made, uh, there's going to be choppy motion because instead of uh, being patient and doing 24 frames per second or 30 frames per second, you might have 8 frames per second, 12 frames per second. The uh, the frame rate varies. And uh, lastly, since it's not professional, so there's no you know miniature sets or equipment. Every time somebody moves a character or the set. There, there might be light variations because the lights are not professional and the camera position variations because they might uh, budge the camera while moving the characters so let's get started so let's get started let me show you the 3d max scene this is the scene um, rather than going from scratch because this is mostly an after effects tutorial I'll show you I'll show you quickly the scene setup uh, for this lump of clay kind of crawling forward and then like pfft, collapsing. Um, this is a very simple scene. Uh, geometry is uh, for the stage. Let me hide the lump of clay. I have a floor. I have a wall. A wall trim thingy here. Very simple V-ray light. And um, for my setup, I'm using V-ray with um, GI on and I have a very simple environment multiply uh, map which is this uh, HDRI looking image that I found online I googled HDRI and this came up and I used it um, now I'm not an expert at lighting but you should try to make this look as real as possible because it'll help with the illusion that it's actually a stop-motion animation and not 3D. Um, so for the lump of clay, let me show you here. Um, first, I started with a box. I rather work with a cube and then spherify it because when you work with spheres in 3D Max at the poles they have quads, uh, they have triangles instead of quads and they pinch when you apply modifiers to them and that looks ugly. So start with a box, put several subdivisions on it, I have 10 by 10 by 10 and then apply a spherify. So now you have sphere. Um, but this sphere will have the seams, you can see them here, so apply a smooth modifier that gets rid of the seams then apply a noise so it looks uh, you know like it's a handmade 
somebody you know grabbed a bunch of clay and just uh, you know bunched it together into a ball and then um, I animated if I hide the geometry you can see that I animated a point it's just moving forward and then it stops and uh, it's very important if you see the curves that the curves are linear because remember one of the things we're trying to fake it's poor planning on the animation and poor planning means no curves linear animation so the point is moving forward at the same time the lump of clay is just rotating but I parented the clay to the point so it just follows the point and it rotates on its own but the combination of the two gives the illusion that it's rolling around finally I applied a um, FFD uh, space warp let me turn it on there it is it's that orange looking thing and uh, when I turn it on I modified it as you can see I pulled the points in the bottom section apart from the center and it looks as though the clay has some weight and then I linked the FFD to the point as well because if I don't let's say it's not linked then as soon as the sphere steps out the effect is lost so basically I just linked the FFD to the point like that and that gives the illusion of the clay kind of crawling um, let me just hide that so that you can see what I'm talking about and hide the helper and then um, at the end here after it stops I animated the space warp so that it goes back to normal and then I animated a melt which uh, is turned off right here so as as soon as it as the FFD goes back to the cube shape the lump of clay melts and then I just applied a turbo smooth for good measure as far as the material I applied a grayish looking material uh, that's my experience when you lump a bunch of clay after a while it looks kinda like this color and uh, I googled uh, fingerprint and I got this map that I'm using as a um, bump map so that it looks like people have been manipulating the clay that's one of the other things that kinda gives away a homemade stop-motion animation they don't clean up the you know they don't have those professional clay figures that don't keep the fingerprints um, and finally uh, the camera let me just unhide it the camera motion if you see the trajectory is also and if you see the curves it's linear so it just moves along at the same kind of rate one last thing before rendering out and going into After Effects um, it's always a good idea let's say you're gonna be working at 640 by 480 uh, you're gonna want to render bigger than your actual final resolution so I'm gonna render 100 pixels more here and I keep the image aspect at 1.3 and the computer will calculate the height um, and uh, this is gonna come in handy later on so just go ahead and render your main path which is the only one we'll use for this tutorial and then we'll go into After Effects so now we're in After Effects so we'll take our main layer and uh, drag it to the comp uh, icon here and it'll create a comp with the same uh, characteristics as your footage which is 740 by 555 30 frames per second 141 frames 
Now I'm going to press Control K, or if you're a Mac user, I think it's Command K. And I'm going to name this uh, Lump of Clay. And remember, if the idea is that our comp is going to be smaller than our actual footage. So I'm going to switch this to 640, and since we're keeping the aspect ratio, 1.3, the computer calculates 480, which is okay. 640 by 480, and that's what we want. So as you can see, our footage is larger than our comp. Now, uh, first thing first, I'm going to go ahead and apply the regular color correction, just a little bit of uh, curves here. Just a little bit, not too much. I don't want it to go completely red. Like that. As you can see, it's always better to contrast your footage just a little bit, maybe too much here. Uh, okay, um, then we're gonna go and apply a new adjustment layer to sharpen the center of the image. New adjustment layer. And we're gonna name it Sharpen. Look for the sharpen effect in your effects and preset tab. Sharpen, and there it is. Just drag it in here and just give it a 10, maybe 15. Kind of brings it into focus. Um, one thing I like to do is sharpen the center, and as you go away from the center of the image, the sharpen kind of fades away. So I'll just double click the ellipse tool and I get an instant mask and I'm gonna exaggerate this so you can see the effect. No sharpen here, sharpen here. So select your adjustment layer, double click M to get all the mask settings and give it a feather of, I don't know, 60. And then we'll shrink it just a little bit so that the focus of our image is in the center and that's what's going to be more sharp and in focus. Now let's make it back to 15. If you, t if you click on this uh, toggle mask button you can hide your mask and see if you like the effect or not. So I'm satisfied with that. I'm going to add uh, now blur to the top and the bottom of the comp. This will help the sharpen effect. Everything in the center is sharp and towards the edges things should look blurry. I'm gonna, I'm gonna hit Control y if you're a PC user or a Command Y I think for Mac. Make a new solid. I'm gonna name it Top Bottom Blur and hit this adjustment layer checkbox right here and it becomes your solid just became an adjustment layer. We're gonna add a blur but not a Gaussian blur. I like this fast blur right here because let's say you have a blur of 50 um, you can uh, let me make the footage the size of the comp. If you apply a blur and your footage ed ends at the edge of the comp, you get this black stuff here. But with fast blur, you can click this checkbox, repeat edge pixels, and it'll get rid of it for you. But for now, let's go back to 100% scale here. Go back to your adjustment layer. I'm gonna make the blur 10, and I'm gonna put another mask so that I have blur on top and on the bottom. Just a very simple mask. Oops, wrong layer. Right here. Now, we have the blur inside, so what we want to do 
is check this box where it says invert it and now the blur is on the outside but it's kinda abruptly ending here and here let me exaggerate it so that you can see what I'm talking about see so I'm gonna select my adjustment layer hit M twice and uh, give it a feather of uh, 50 let's see if that looks okay maybe it's too much blur just go to 15 and maybe a bigger mask okay so now we have our focus of the image in the center kind of blurred at the top and at the bottom now we're going to be simulating the light variations that might happen from frame to frame uh, on a stop-motion animation that's kind of homemade so we're going to add another adjustment layer Let's make a new solid name it light variations hit OK make it an adjustment layer by clicking here and now we're gonna add a uh, curves so we're gonna be animating this curve to simulate the light changing so go ahead and click the little stopwatch right here so that whatever you move here is gonna create a keyframe so there's the stopwatch if you press U on the layer that has animation it'll show you whatever keyframes you have so there we have curves so just make random variations to this let's just go here and do a little variation there go here and make it here Oop. I don't want that try not to exaggerate too much but do go random and make several of these changes no matter how minute they might they might appear to you there we go now if we go ahead and preview this by uh, pressing 0 on your numpad or clicking right here uh, you can see that one crucial detail is missing from these light variations is, and that is uh, they, are, they are occurring in a linear fashion and uh, they are supposed to be happening from frame to frame all of a sudden so that's easily fixable just go ahead and select all of your keyframes for the curves right click and go to where it says keyframe interpolation and uh, where it says temporal interpolation on the drop down menu select hold and press OK as you can see they have changed appearance if you preview this again you can see that it's, a, it's kind of a stepped key uh, in that it changes uh, abruptly so this is more of kind of what we're going for so now we're going to be simulating the camera position variations that might occur when making a stop-motion animation uh, let's say you're moving the lump of clay one frame at a time and every time you go to move it you press pause on the camera, you move the clay, you press pause again, and you press rack. And every time you do that, if it's not a professional camera, you're going to have slight position and rotation variations on your camera that are going to be very evident when you play back the final animation. So instead of applying these uh, position variations to our main footage directly, we're going to be creating a new null object. Put it here in the bottom. Uh, it, 
if it's not visible if it's on top it's just for you know to have everything everything nice and tidy here um, and uh, we're gonna be naming it go, uh, layer settings and name it position parent so what we're going to do is apply some motion to this null object and the null object will move our main footage so select the main footage and uh, look for this column where it says parent if you don't have it uh, you might have you might you're gonna have to click some of these uh, buttons here on the bottom until you get it so parent select this um, look at this squiggly line here if you click and hold you get a line and just with that line select the position parent as you can see the parent is the position parent right here so press P select the parents press P for position you get X and Y and if you move it around the main footage will move along with it that's what we want so we're going to be giving this a very random motion um, and uh, we could just go ahead and the way the same way we did the light variations uh, you know do it randomly by hand but uh, let's say if it's a very long animation you don't want to be doing that all afternoon so you can put a position key by pressing the stopwatch right here at the beginning go to the end make another one by clicking this little checkbox right here and we got position key from here and a position key from here and uh, we're going to be using this window called the wiggler to apply random motion to our animation which is basically no animation so far we just need two keyframes so if you select the position and hit and select the wiggler here and select apply it'll apply a number of uh, random keyframes that as a guide have these two settings the frequency and the magnitude or if you scrub you can see the the edges of your actual comp which is of your footage which is bigger than your comp kinda move around a little but it's too subtle to be noticeable so we're gonna hit control Z select the position and we're going to uh, up the magnitude so instead of one go ahead and click three and hit apply so let's check it out if you scrub you can see the edges move a little bit more but as you can see since we rendered so big compared to our comp we have a lot more to play with so you can actually you know go to town and make the magnitude I don't know eight or something and you are still within the boundary so we'll just keep it like this for now although it might look a little bit exaggerated so yeah let's just go ahead and go to four and hit apply and there we go so we have the same problem as we did with the light variations and that is these variations of position are happening continuously instead of from one frame to the next so the same thing happens just go ahead and select all your keyframes right click keyframe interpolation temporal interpolation drop down menu select hold click OK and now they are happening from one frame to the next now if these are happening in a very uh, uniform timely manner uh, that'll change in the last step of this uh, tutorial so don't worry about it but you can give the animation a little helping hand by you know randomly deleting some of them and maybe rearranging the timing a little bit so that it looks a little bit more uh, random and uh, man-made let's say there we go and uh, we're going to do the same thing if you if you select your uh, position parent we already have the position displayed here if you click 
shift and hold and press R for rotation, you'll get the rotation track. Go ahead and do the same thing. Make a rotation a keyframe at the beginning and a rotation keyframe at the end. And we're going to apply a wiggler uh, to the position to the rotation track. But here, uh, if you you're going to have to be very careful with the magnitude because these are degrees and they will be more noticeable than the position. As you can see, it's moving quite a lot and uh, that's a bit too much. So for uh, the rotation I'm going to change the frequency to maybe instead of five times per second go three times per second and the magnitude to just one. Go ahead, click apply and I think if you look at the boundaries when you scrub, I think that's a good enough variation without going overboard. So go ahead and select all your keyframes again. Right click, keyframe interpolation, and make them hold. That way it happens from one frame to the next. And go ahead and give it that random look by maybe deleting a couple of them and changing the timing on some of the others. Trying to keep them at the same time, these, okay. Let me make a quick preview. There we go, I think. Now, the camera is moving continuously until the very last few uh, frames, uh, 25 frames or so, when the camera stops and the clay just drops down. So here it kind of doesn't look as good, so I'm going to delete these few frames at the end here so that when the camera is still, the you know quote-unquote mistake of moving the camera is less evident because you're not moving the camera around. Okay, so now the final step in uh, simulating homemade stop motion animation is uh, simulating the choppy uh, motion of things. Uh, since it's not planned ahead, you might have uh, parts of the animation where the frame rate is 8 frames per second or 12 frames per second, and then, you know, all of a sudden you add more detail so it's 24 and then all of a sudden it's back to 10 frames or something like that. So we're gonna add another um, adjustment layer, so new adjustment layer. Change the settings, we're gonna name it Posterize because that's the effect we're gonna be using. So go ahead, uh, we can get rid of the wiggler now. Let's go ahead and search here for an effect called Posterize, but not this Posterize, this one, Time Posterize. Go ahead and drag it onto your adjustment layer. And as you can see, it gives us just one setting, frame rate. Now, our footage is rendered and interpreted at 30 frames per second. That's going to be very smooth. So what I want to do, a very choppy motion by making my whole comp, anything that's below this adjustment layer, so it's everything basically, a frame rate of 8 frames per second in instead of 30. Now that's a big difference. If you preview the first 30 frames, you can see that already it's starting to look very choppy, crafty, handmade looking. But uh, what I like to do is also uh, keyframe this so that the frame rate actually varies uh, from time to time. Uh, when making the commercials that I mentioned at the beginning, um, this was very useful for parts where we really needed to show clearly an action by one of the characters. So we might be looking at maybe 12 frames per second, but then all of a sudden the characters were stu was uh, performing a certain... Uh, certain action that we wanted to really show well, so I'll animate 
this to a 24 frames per second instead of 12 so it looks smoother. Hit the stopwatch and uh, the keyframes for posterized time are not allowed to be linear. They are already by default hold keyframes so don't worry about that whole process again. And uh, first we're gonna start with 8 frames per second and then you know maybe maybe here the, the person doing this animation started putting a little bit more effort into it so we'll go to 20 frames per second and we'll keep it at 20 and then here he got tired again so we'll go down to 12 and uh, 12 frames per second maybe here switch back to 8 which is pretty bad and then here 20 or whatever you just put any number that you want anything that makes sense to your animation and then maybe here go to 24 because we're going to be performing this melt action and we want to add some detail to it so 24 frames per second right before it collapses so let's move this maybe do a little little more variation here let's go to 8 and let's change oh that's a 20 that's an 8 back to 24 and then it'll kind of melt there and then here let's go back to 8 frames per second and we're gonna preview to see if we like the result Now, as I'm looking at the preview, it actually, you know, looks very crafty, very amateur uh, video. And uh, what I like about the choppy motion is that it, it'll hold the footage long enough for you to see the fingerprint bump map that I added. So it looks kind of cool. A couple of things before ending the tutorial. First, you can animate the blur effect that we added at the top and at the bottom of the comp. This will simulate the cameras that you can find in most homes that they try to automatically focus um, and if you uh, also if you animate this blur it'll simulate that camera not being very cooperative which usually happens in these kinds of uh, homemade projects. Also one more thing do not add motion blur to this be it from uh, your 3D program or in After Effects because uh, these kinds of uh, stop motion animations do not have motion blur because they are frame by frame. It's a series of photographs. So that's it for this tutorial. Have fun with this effect and uh, this has been Juan Duque for AETootsPlus.com. See you next tutorial. Bye!